Hey guys, Mike here. So today, I'm here to talk to you about the curse of La Llorona. In this review, I'll be going over a brief summary of the plot, my quick thoughts about the film, and whether or not you guys should go and see it. So I'm going to try and keep this review spoiler free. However, if you don't know anything about the film, and you want to go completely blind, then it's just come back to this video once you've seen the film. So with that, let's get started, shall we? <laughs> So, The Curse of La Llorona stars Lena Carlini as Anna. You may remember her from Green Book and from the live-action Scooby-Doo movies. In The Curse of La Llorona, Anna is trying to adjust to life as a single mum after losing her husband, and she works as a social worker who helps families out through domestic violence and other things like that. After a case involving a Latin American family, both of her children become cursed by the spirit of La Llorona, and now Anna must do everything she can to try and break the curse of La Llorona that has been put upon her children. Now I know what you're thinking, this movie sounds really generic, it sounds like every other horror movie, movie out there and it's probably not got an original bone in its body. Oh sorry, were you waiting for me to disagree with you? That's exactly what this movie is. Now don't get me wrong, there are definitely things to enjoy about this one. First of all, Lena Carlini is definitely a strong lead. She plays a part really well, you know, with the script that she's been given. And, you know, her character's definitely likeable. Raymond Cruz is in this as well, who you may remember as Tuco from Breaking Bad, and he plays a former priest who is now a shaman who tries to help him break the curse of Lila Rona. But it was kind of weird seeing him as one of the more calm and collected characters in something, as opposed to seeing him like this. Whoa! Damn, man, look at that, look! Whew! Yeah, after that, it's kind of hard to see him as calm and collected. But actually, one thing I found funny with Lena Cardellino was at the start of the movie, one of her children is watching Scooby-Doo. And it's quite funny because she played Velma in the live-action Scooby-Doo movies. I'm not sure if anyone else in the theater when I was watching this actually got that connection, but when I saw it, it, just, it, it did make me laugh. There's probably people reviewing this movie who noticed it too. I just thought that I'd point it out as well. But now, as for the actual movie... You'd be lying to yourself if you say you hadn't seen this one before. Family get cursed by evil spirit, they're dismissive of it at first, they try and do everything they can, they get in someone who specialises in the supernatural, and eventually they do break the curse. You know, spoiler, but you know, it's gonna happen. And for pretty much 70% of its runtime, all you need to do is just throw in a couple of jump scares and boom, you've got yourself a horror movie. Now, if this is definitely your thing, then by all means you definitely enjoy this one. But for me, I just kind of look for a bit more originality in my horror movies. I'd say actually the biggest surprise for me came from the fact that this movie is directly tied in with the Conjuring franchise. I mean, I probably should have guessed that when I looked at the poster again. May have been obvious to some people, but I just didn't really pay attention to that. And that was a nice surprise for me. I don't believe I've seen any of the other Conjuring movies, and after this I wouldn't say I'd want to go out of my way to see them. Having said that though, I think the Conjuring franchise, other than the MCU obviously, and I guess you could say the DCEU, it's one of the only shared universe movie franchises that's actually working and making money. Which is another thing to say, but these movies, they make triple their production budget literally in the first one or two weeks. So that's why they're able to keep making these things, because they make them for cheap, and they make loads more money when they come out. Probably in three or four years, we'll have Annabelle, The Nun, and Lila Rona all fighting aliens in space or something. Now, I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous, and it sounds like a really dumb movie. I'd definitely go see it, though. That's, it does sound pretty awesome. <laughs> Overall, guys, there's not really much else to add about this one. The acting was definitely good and definitely sees you through it. The jump scares definitely do get you, even though I do hate jump scares, and I think they're probably the lamest thing in horror. Despite all that, I wasn't bored with this one, and I still had quite a good time with it. But now, as for everyone else, you guys should go and see it. Honestly, if you're looking for a bit more originality with your horror movies, then steer clear of this one. This won't offer you anything you haven't seen before, and it'll just be like every other horror movie out there. But, if that's your cup of tea, if you want just a nice, simple scare fest to kind of sit back and enjoy, then, you know, go watch this one. And also, if you're into watching every single movie in the Conjuring franchise, then definitely go see this one. Whether the Conjuring franchise actually got some big plan of bringing all these characters together, we'll have to wait and see. But as of now, The Curse of Lila Rona, it's an alright time at the cinema, it's just nothing I would personally recommend that you go see. Okay guys, that's my review of The Curse of La Llorona. If you've seen it, what did you think about it? And what's your favourite movie in the Conjuring franchise? Whatever it is, drop it in the comments below. And until next time, I've been Michael. See ya!